Okay, so the final topic. You might not exactly think about it as social media and such, and perhaps by most definitions it's not exactly social media, but by the definition of web marketing, it does fit. So today we're talking about podcasting. So podcasts, on demand, on demand internet radio. That's sort of one simple definition of what podcasts are. Oh, and one quick thing before we get started, uh, take a moment to mute your devices if you haven't muted your devices. So, podcasts, on-demand, internet radio. So these are radio shows that are published on a schedule, often once per week where you can where where you can subscribe and listen on your time so the name originally came from iPod and broadcast podcast iPod so the iPod was um, the uh, predecessor to the iPhone it was a digital music player. Uh, it was a way to, to listen to music. Well, the iPod was internet connected. And so uh, some creative people figured out, well, we can create our own sort of radio shows and publish them. And with people's iPods, they can subscribe and listen to us when they want to hear. So podcasts, iPod plus broadcast, podcast, broadcast. Uh, so, the difference is with uh, classic radio, you, you're driving around, you turn on the, the radio, and you tune into the dial, you tune the dial, and then you listen to the show that's happening at that moment. If you miss the show there, you would normally would not then be able to hear it again. You had to listen to that show at that time, and, and if it was you know, during your commute, you could listen to it, but then besides that, I'm not in the car, I don't have my radio or whatever, so I don't hear it. Well, because now in the digital world, things are more on demand. These podcasters create their shows, they publish them, yeah, on a specific day and time, but then you can um, download the latest episode on an iPhone, on an Android, on a tablet, on your computer. So you don't need an iPod anymore for that. You use your podcast app, sometimes called a podcatcher. Use your podcast app to subscribe and listen at your own pace. You don't lose your place. So it's maybe an hour-long episode, and you could only listen to 20 minutes during your jog, and you can come back to it and listen to it exactly where you, where you stopped. Yes. So this has to be on a device. No, it can be on a computer as well. Uh, and uh, I'm seeing more like really modern cars nowadays that have a cool like instrument panel, touch panel, and all of that. They have that ability as well to tune into uh, podcasts. So if I start it on my phone, I pick it up on my computer, it'll all pick up in the same place. Or? It depends. It depends on the app. That the part there is that's dependent on the app. If you're using a certain app to listen on the phone, you should use the equivalent app on the uh, computer, and then it should synchronize your your playtime. So, um, to get started. Um, to get started in pod, okay. Let's before it gets started. Actually, let's do here. Why? Why the why for you as a business? Why would a podcast be useful to you? So, another avenue for marketing. Another avenue to promote yourself. Another avenue to reach your audience.
low cost, either from free to not so free, but not so bad. So the smart building thinks you want to open the window. Okay, so um, this is just another form of, of marketing, another way to reach an audience. Uh, and because uh, a lot of the audience nowadays, we have so much to do or such short attention spans, we want things on our terms. Uh, therefore, you create your podcast episodes uh, and people uh, might not listen this week, but they will listen eventually when they have their time, when they're driving, when they're doing chores, uh, when they're exercising. Um, uh, people could, uh, at their own pace, listen in. So to get started, you need an idea. You need hardware. You need software. And you need distribution. <coughs> OK, so if you think in terms of the classic radio stations, uh, talk radio especially, they have a topic. They talk about sports or religion or politics, and you see plenty of those throughout the history of radio about sports and politics, religion, finance, etc. But the more famous shows, they stand out for a variety of reasons, their topics, their personality, etc. So with podcasts, um, <coughs> it's the same sort of thing. The barriers to entry can be very low for free. <coughs> Whereas, if you wanted to have a radio show in the old days, well, you needed to ha uh, you needed to have access to the radio station and uh, have a, a contract and pay and all of that. Um, here, it's we'll see how this can all be set up for free. So, the idea: what can you talk about regarding your business? or expertise. What can you talk about regarding your business expertise in the long term? <coughs> Thank you. So it's it's a talk show. Now one of the things of course here is it's a talk show. So if you're not comfortable public speaking now, if you're going to be doing this in the privacy of your own home, the recordings, you're not going to be in front of an audience, which, you know, 90%, I've read some statistics, like 90% of people are more afraid of public speaking than dying, you know, something like that. Uh, so this is not that you're going to be talking to an actual audience live. You'll be at the safety of your home and such. But what can you talk about on, on a long term? So let's say, uh, again, I, I keep saying, you know, Victor's Bakery and that sort of thing. So if I was going to create a podcast, you can sort of think about it like an audio version of a blog. On a blog, I'm going to write articles on a specific topic. Podcast could be the audio version of that. Not that you're reading your blog. You're going to be talking about it more naturalistically. So if I've got Future's Bakery, I want to create a blog where on, on my schedule, like let's say once a week, we put out an episode. Um, uh, talking about you know health trends or the state of the industry or interesting things regarding food. So idea, what can you talk about? Do you have a schedule? And commonly, once per week. Any length. There's no set length for, for this. You can create episodes, five minutes, 50 minutes, two hours, doesn't matter. Can you talk about, about it at any length? Solo or group? Are you the only one talking in the podcast? Are you, do you have guests? Do you have... Um, you know, panelists that you're that you're talking about. When you start to use those sorts of terms, suddenly it sounds like, well, this is big and complicated. It is a whole show. It doesn't have to be that complicated. 
it's uh, as much as you want to put into it. But just like all of the other social media we've talked about, that Facebook isn't too valuable for, uh, to you, or the Twitter isn't too valuable to you, if you don't use it on a regular basis. You started that Facebook account, but you haven't put anything in a month. Well, it's not as valuable as it could have been if it's been active. Podcasts, they're not going to be as valuable to you if you don't do them on a regular basis. Once a week, every other week, something like that. Yes? How do you compare to webinar? Webinar is often uh, also video. Uh, so you have uh, video content versus audio content. The problem with video content is that then usually the important thing is to look at it. And so therefore, if people are driving or listening uh, on headphones and such, they can't see the visuals. So they miss that part of it. They're both valuable, I think. I think uh, webinars uh, take up more, more effort. And perhaps we don't have the time for it. We're running the business. We're, we're on Facebook or Twitter. And I'm starting to either think about webinars or podcasts. I would go with podcasts because it's less work. Yeah. You do some people said podcasts like a radio show. There's sometimes do you have people come on to a new one? Like two people. I personally don't do that very much. I've got a podcast. I don't I don't do that too much. But you could definitely. Like there is exactly there. There are no rules of in terms of uh, what's good and bad. It's just what can you do? What effort can you put into it? What content can you create? So. Here where I have solo or group, that, that's the thing. Are you going to be the only one talking, or are you going to have guests, panelists, etc.? And you could, and depending on the format of your show and the topic and such, it could be... So more like a popularity as you hit your, your topics? In a sense that as you get more popular, you could get more guests, yeah. So... The, um, the idea... That, that's the, the hard part uh, to teach because it, it depends on what your business is and such. The hardware. Microphone. That's the, the only real requirement there. But if you were here on the YouTube, on the YouTube lecture, um, part one, we talked about um, a little bit more detail here. We have, for example, a laptop, built-in microphone. We have USB, plug-in microphone. We have handheld recorder microphone. And we have lapel or lavalier microphone. So if you've got a laptop, most likely it's got a microphone built in. Um, now, to make you a little more paranoid, if you've got a laptop, I know a lot of people nowadays, you, you cover the camera with a little sticker. Uh, no one's covering their microphone. Something to think about. So uh, the laptop has the uh, camera built in and a microphone built in, and then there's your microphone right there. So when we get to hardware, uh, software, we can talk about how to use it. But uh, there's, a, there's an audio recorder built into your laptop. Now, oftentimes, laptop microphones are not very good. Uh, your voice will sound mechanical. Uh, there might be a lot of static in the recording. Microphones built into your computer are not usually very good. So let's say over here, least recommended. Gaming laptops have better microphones, but that's because the purpose of those kinds of laptops is to play the games, talk to your opponents, etc. But for most of us with a regular business or consumer laptop, the microphones aren't that great built in. Uh, USB uh, plug-in, you can get, there's so many styles of these. I think I mentioned some before. Um, for example, Yeti, uh, Snowball, there's these microphones that they sit on your desk. You plug them into the, your computer USB port, and they are much better, much better quality than the built-in laptops. 
handheld recorders. Here I mentioned, for example, Zoom H2N or uh, Zoom H1. There's all these generations of this brand, and there's many other brands. These are the ones that I've used. So this is that uh, on its own, it's a it's a little device. Uh, the microphone is, you know, it's all this self-contained thing. Microphone here and uh, saves to the memory card or plugs into the computer, and it's portable. You can take it and record anything anywhere, and then you just transfer the the sound over to the computer. And that. And then the Lavillier uh, clips to your shirt. Clips to your shirt. Uh, most recommended, in my opinion, because no matter how good a microphone you have, they don't work if you're not close enough to it that your voice goes to it. So for a beginner, having a lapel mic that uh, clips right onto your shirt. Well, there's a microphone right right next to your mouth. You're talking. You don't have to think too much about it, and it's going to record your voice very well because it's close to your mouth. And there's a variety of prices. There's a variety of prices for all of these. You can uh, you can look them up online. Yes. There there's um. Let me see, the one that I'm using right now that I like, uh, it's from uh, Audio Technica. That's a brand that creates a lot of microphones and such. And that's the one I'm using there. But you know, you, 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 don't, you can't go wrong with something like a Sony brand, microphones and such. And there's other ones like Behringer that are like high-end professional ones. But Audio Technica is pretty affordable. I think I got it for like $29. And there's prices all over the place. Uh, whenever you're thinking about getting something, make sure you check reviews. So even if something has an amazing price, the reviews might say, it's too cheap quality for this, so don't even get it. So always check reviews. Software. Oh, can I ask a question? Yes. Say so like you do your, your YouTube one. If you did a YouTube one, can you take the audio from that? And then put it with your podcast, or is that the same thing where you're doing your YouTube type of clips and then subtract your audio feed in your podcast? Do you mean the same audio from that YouTube video to the podcast? You 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 could do that, but usually uh, someone is making the video because of the focus is on the visuals. So you might be talking in the video about, yeah, look at this product. These buttons here are amazing. Well, when that gets then extracted as audio only, then there's nothing to see when people hear it. Now, it it could work to take the audio from your from your video, but most likely the video is set up in a way focused on visuals. Software. So there's a huge variety here, but one that I like is Audacity. Free. Very powerful. It allows you to, when you plug in the microphone, you can then uh, record your voice there and do a variety of edits and such. We actually have the software on these computers, um, or we used to have it. Can you take a quick look here, everyone? Can you take a quick check? Go to your start menu, and can you search for Audacity? Not Audition, but Audacity. Do you have it on your computers? <coughs> Audacity. No. Okay, well, never mind then. I was going to show briefly Audacity. Uh, I guess we don't, we don't have it at the moment. Uh, Audacity, free software, free download, Windows or our Mac. And um, it's got a, an interface where you can edit audio. Now, we have Adobe Audition, which uh, I don't know how to use, but uh, I'm sure it's similar. Let me open that up briefly. Just... Um, <coughs> just to see what it looks like. So would you, I mean, if you have this, would you use this instead of the Audacity, or you just, you know, the Audacity is what you've got in your I, I've used Audacity for years, so um, that's the one that I would be comfortable in. I'd have to learn the brand new interface of Audition. Um, 
learning from scratch, perhaps aud audition, because it is the big <coughs> professional one, so you have more features. Audacity, audition, not free. Now just, yes? Is Adobe Yeah. Yeah. It comes with the Adobe Suite. Kidding, what am I looking at here? So, creating your, oh, look at that. There's a creating your first podcast. Okay, so uh, it's a big complicated interface, but basically you have an audio recorder. Because I've got my microphone already for my uh, lecture, it, it won't quite work. But the idea is uh, that you have <coughs> press here to start to record. Then your voice will get recorded. Then you can select a piece and remove your mistake. Or you can fade in or fade out or put music tracks. It's like a video editor, but obviously for audio. So um, that's, audacity, uh, that's audition. Audacity is a, a little bit of a simpler interface, which might be useful if you're uh, if you're just starting off with it. So you need to have your idea, your hardware, software, and then we'll get to distribution. Yes. Camtasia, to my knowledge, focuses on video, but it should record some audio. I haven't used it very recently, but I know a lot of people really like it. So give it a shot. I'm sure there's also um, ways to use it. Because all you need is some sort of recorder. And maybe with Camtasia, it, you can uh, record only audio. And, and that'd be fine. And I'd be curious. I'd, I'd look up um, using Camtasia for podcasts. And then maybe look at a couple of articles there and see how that works. Is Camtasia free? I'm used. Yeah, same here. Same here. Usually, uh, us instructors, we get a copy of it for free. So I don't know if regular people don't get it for free. Probably not. Uh, so then we've got distribution. Used to record the audio and edit it. <laughs> free download often means you can start using it for free for some features and then you upgrade to the better features. So the software is used to record the audio and to edit it. Okay, well, you've got this episode, you've got this plan, you've got this uh, idea that you're going to be recording a podcast once a week on a topic. Next is distribution. So you need to upload it somewhere so that podcatchers, right, the, um, the apps where you can listen to a podcast, you need to upload it somewhere so that podcatchers can subscribe. Here's some examples. Um, SoundCloud. Bandcamp. Libsyn, I think that's the spelling for that. I'll confirm in a moment. But here are some places where you can upload. Uh, you know, YouTube is the place where you upload your video. These are the places where you upload your audio. So SoundCloud is like the YouTube of sound. There's Bandcamp, Libsyn. This is where then I said earlier about it goes from free to not so free. Because these will often give you space for a certain amount of hours. And then after that, you, you have to pay. SoundCloud, I believe they give you two, maybe three hours for free. So if you're doing episodes that last 30 minutes, and they give you two free hours, well, that's only four episodes that would fit in your free account. If you're doing shorter episodes, 10 minute long episodes, okay, that's, you know, uh, 60, 6, 12, that's 12 episodes. If you're doing once a week, that's 12 weeks. Then when you pay for the next levels up, you get, you know, 50 hours, and then uh, I go for the ultimate one, 
uh, which is unlimited. So you can put as many hours there. Uh, I forgot the price on that, but we'll, we can look it up. But basically, you need to upload your audio somewhere so that then people can subscribe to you. Yes? Yes, when you upload your sounds to these, they will give you an embed code or a link so that then you can add it to your site and play your sound right off of your own site. SoundCloud is 15 a month at 135. 135, yeah, that sounds right. So, yeah, 135, you know, sounds, it's $135, but for the whole year, unlimited space, uh, it, it could be worth it. Now, you could use the free version uh, and then uh, after a few weeks or episodes and decide it's useful or not, you can then upgrade. Let's. Yeah, most of them do nowadays because podcasts are so much more popular. Let me confirm this other one. Okay, I, I put it backwards. L I B S Y N. Libsyn, that's the other one. Um, they've been around a, uh, for a while, since 2004. So podcasts have been around a while. Uh, they're becoming more and more and more popular with which such shows as, um, you know, Serial and uh, some of these other true crime ones. Uh, what do we have? Five dollars per month. So per year, that's uh, sixty, sixty dollars per year. And then you would see here how much space and such. This podcast one. Is that a, is that a I'm pretty sure that's a distributor, yeah, podcast one. Uh, now there's a whole bunch of podcast distributors um, that are sort of like, um, you know, radio, radio stations. Um, you know, there's a radio station with a variety of shows. So podcast one is one of them, Feral Audio. Um, just such a variety of these of these um, podcast networks. So again, this would be the version, the audio version. This one, um, yes and no. Uh, yes, in terms of a consumer of podcasts, but not as a creator. YouTube. Remember, we have the consumer version. We have the creator version. Uh, this is, podcast one is the example where I would go and listen to podcasts, not that I would create them. Where I, where I would create them would be Libsyn or uh, SoundCloud. Not create, but where I would upload my episodes. So SoundCloud is the one that I, that I would say is the podcast of, um, I mean, the, uh, the YouTube of audio. Podcast one is where you would go to like find podcasts to listen to. Right, so like professionally done. Uh, yeah, they're they're getting up there uh, in terms, you know. Okay, there's Dennis Miller, Shaquille O'Neal, um, Norman Lear. So yeah, this is like one of the big networks um, uh, with bigger names of uh, in the podcast world. So yeah, so that's what that's why you can't just upload your own. Yes, it's exactly. Like schlocks. Yes. <laughs> schlocks. Oh. <laughs> that's a technical thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, it sounds like a piece code. So the, um, you need an agent, and then you need to get in contact with the representation, and then create a contract. You, then you create a contract, then you set up a, your sponsorships and all of that. So yes, it is a big, it is a big one. Uh, so for us regular people, uh, we, uh, we, we rely on the usual uh, Facebook promotion, Twitter promotion. We rely on that word of mouth and, and all of that. So. so 
sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Let me show you an example from one of us schmoes. You can check it out right here. Here's my podcast, soundcloud.com slash vmcampos. So one of my hobbies is comic books. I've been collecting comics for over 30 years. So uh, I've got a podcast here where every week I talk about a different comic in my collection. So with, you know, more than 2,000 comics, I, I have episodes for 2,000 weeks. Um, so, and then I buy something new every week, so it'll never end. So, uh, here, I've, I've gotten up to episode 109. I just released it on Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I release an episode that is traditionally known as New Comic Book Day. Comic books come out new every Wednesday. So, uh, this uh, past Wednesday, I reviewed this comic. It's basically, usually, a five-minute long podcast just talking about my hobby, uh, one of my hobbies, comic books. This is one that I do on the side just for fun. It's not related to anything business-wise. I don't make any money off of this. Uh, and uh, I get, uh, see this one's got seven views, or seven listens so far. This one's got 29, 13, etc. So not a huge audience, of course, but uh, there's an audience of people that are also into comic books that like to listen in. So it's the account there on SoundCloud, and then, then it has uh, share. And that's where you get the code to then attach it to your website or put it on your Facebook or promote it on, on Twitter. So they, all, uh, they are all available now to, to be shared. And then I connect it here with my Twitter and Google Plus and everything. Yes. Wednesdays? No, I said every Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday is traditionally known as New Comic Book Day. That's the day that new comics appear in the comic shops. So I'm also publishing my uh, podcast about comics on Wednesday, the day that new comics are sold. So um, they, uh, they range, depending on the topic of the comic, this one's 4 minutes, 48 seconds, 7 minutes. There's some that are longer. That's 23 minutes long. Um, and uh, I'm usually just uh, on my own talking about the comics, so uh, new comics, old comics, and it's just a, a hobby, a fun thing to do and to publish, and some of them take off, 55 views and such, and, and uh, it's just something fun to do. So, I mean, that's, that's very impressive that you have been so disciplined to do this and it looks good and professional and stuff. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but you have a very small following overall, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, given the effort, um, what about, like, does this help with your, you know, kind of SEO and stuff? Because it's audio. So how does that... You know, well, it's like still... Um, I have um, Google Alerts set up for various keywords that tell me when Google... Uh, becomes aware of something, I get an alert. So I have an alert for various keywords, and when there's an episode out, Google tells me, oh, that episode is out. It's not that I submitted it to the search engine, Google finds it. So the search engines will still find your content here because the SEO keywords and such, number one, they're, uh, they're in the title. So here it's about comic books. Okay, Superman, that's, that's a key word. Everyone re, uh, searches Superman or whatever. So when you, when you create the episode, you have a spot to do, to do metadata and keywords and such. The name of this episode here is Superman, Man of Steel, number 18. So you have a little overview thing there. And then you have also a little spot there to do a blurb. And then in there, you fill in as well. So right here, I'm saying, okay, this is... Uh, okay, this is it, the epic death of Superman storyline starts here, this is the public version, etc. So you can then put a, a couple of paragraphs, if you wanted, of, of notes and fill those with keywords. And then so that's further how you're getting uh, found by the search engines. Yeah. No, it's cool. I'm just trying to think of, you know, like again, I'm thinking of my surgeon client, you know, like maybe she can interview, you know, patients, or maybe she just talks about 
part. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Like uh, you could do it sort of like uh, testimonials. So it's it's an interview sort of thing. Yeah. It's testimonials, and therefore it's a stealth self promotion and advertising. Right. That would be completely an idea to have for that business. Yes. Okay, two questions. Uh, so when you take, say so you embed it in, into Facebook, so is that the same thing when you, I'm confused about that, like Facebook ha Hangouts or? Uh, the, yeah, the live Facebook. Live. Mm -hmm. So is that almost the same thing like YouTube or, or the uh, podcast? I'm just confused about that part. I'm not sure if I get the question, so. Um, so you said you embedded it in Facebook, so would your, when your people see the timeline that you have this podcast going, and, uh, Yeah, they will, uh, you know, when you do share here and then you go off to Facebook, what's yeah. going to happen is uh, it's going to copy and paste the link into your Facebook, podcast. and uh, a link back to the podcast, and then people um, would see the episode and then they can click play. Yeah. And, and listen to it. And you can say, hey, okay, we're going to have a, a Hangouts or a uh, Facebook Live that you can sell it to that way. You have to group like the webinar or, or something like that. Or you could if you're setting up your podcast that way. Um, you need the planning of doing the pre-promotion that you're going to do it in the future and then do it. Yeah. Uh, so there's that sort of effort that you have to put in. Yeah. Because you only see the Facebook timeline when they see the podcast. They can see that and they say, okay, by the way, we're going to have a Facebook session with everybody mm -hmm. doing those different. Yeah. Question, please. Are you, uh, your weekly podcasts, yeah, are, you, are you scheduling them? Are you recording them and then that's and then schedule it for uh, Wednesday? Or are you actually doing it live and posting that at the same time? For a long time, interestingly, SoundCloud did not have a scheduling system. They barely introduced it like three weeks ago. So for uh, I, I just uh, so once you know this is once a week. So fifty-two weeks is one year. I just crossed over to a hundred episodes. Right, a hundred and four episodes uh, becomes a, a new year. So right here. Season 2, okay, so episode in total, 104, season 2, episode 52. Episode 105, season 3, episode 1. So I'm in season 3 of the podcast. Now, it wasn't really until like three weeks ago or so that they let you schedule. So I had to deal with that. Now, what I would do is I would read and record my thoughts, my reviews on these comics, and like maybe five of them at once, but then I'd have to wait to publish it on the Wednesday of that week. Now that they've got scheduling, I can record the episodes ahead of time and then get them ready and then upload them here and schedule them so that they can come out weekly so that I'm not chained to the computer on the Wednesday to, to submit it. Question? Yeah, when you said when you share it on Facebook, it, it puts a link to the podcast. Does that mean that it takes you off of Facebook over here or you just play it on Facebook? I haven't seen what the latest way that they do it is. Um, you know, I personally don't use Facebook a lot, so I, ha I don't put my podcast on my Facebook that much. I haven't done it in a little while, so I don't know how Facebook shows it at the moment. Uh, sometimes, depending on the mood of these networks, they, I, they either play nice or they don't. So I, at the moment, I don't quite know if the, if the episode will show up, like, you know, click here to play and, it, and you stay in Facebook or that it links you and it goes off of Facebook to SoundCloud. I'm not sure which of those is at, at the moment. But do, you, do you ever share on any of these networks? Yeah, I share uh, most commonly on, um, on Twitter uh, and Google+. And on those, from what I've seen, uh, those do embed it right on the Twitter or Facebook, or Twitter or Google+, so the person clicks play and they stay in Twitter or Google+. I'm not so sure. Yeah, they have to. You're you're gonna see it in a way that it's gonna show you the podcast, and it's gonna have the link to go back to SoundCloud if you want to show more, okay. see more episodes anyway. So is yeah. that way you have all your hashtags? If yeah. Your CEO, your I mean, SEO, that they can go back to the other social networks and. 
Well, the thing about podcasts, oftentimes, unfortunately, is that the podcast, uh, the t- hashtags don't really transfer from one network to the other. Okay. Meaning that if I'm searching for the hashtag anthology on Twitter, that is not going to give me a result of a podcast on SoundCloud. Oh. They are different networks. But I would want to use the same hashtag on the different social networks just to keep it consistent and, and hopefully findable. So your SEO is really in your explanation of the podcast? Yeah, because then there's a limit to the length of the episode. Uh, I think, it, I mean the episode title. I think it goes all the way up to this edge right here. See how like there's the, the length of this episode from here to here. I believe there's enough letters that go off to this right here and then it and then it gets cut off. I've had like one episode that the name of the comic was really long and it didn't want to fit so I had to omit a few words. So the SEO really you're going to be doing it in the description where you have like no limit and then the, uh, the hashtags attached. You just use the same hashtag for other networks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like for Twitter or something? Yes. It's kind of if you announce it in Twitter that you're going to have a podcast that'll come up to your to your SoundCloud. Click on that, and it'll go to SoundCloud, go back and forth. Okay. Yeah, when the episode comes out, I want to promote it. See some of these over here: uh, 63 plays versus you know 12 of the most recent ones, and I then do promote it on on Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, uh, Google Plus and Twitter. On Twitter, I, I promote it on Twitter, and then I use the hashtags related to comics. Over on Google Plus, I go to communities that focus on comics. Remember, we if you were here for the Google Plus, we talked about communities, and that's where you can promote your content in a community really focused on an audience. And, and that does work. Yes? I'm being You should be able to. I mean, I I have a pub pretty public. I should be there. You know, Victor There, there should be. Pl uh, there, there are going to be a lot of them, but um, I sh should be there. You know, I'm the one that looks very mysterious right there. So. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to see if you can get those instructors. What's with that photo? I took it right after. I took it right after the election. It looks like a beat dick. It's a beat dick photo. So, um, yeah, you can go there and find my other comic book stuff. See, talking about comics and and magic cards. See, there I am promoting it uh, in. Uh, you know, the DC Comics community, I reviewed that Superman comic, so I put it in that community. That got some uh, some plays right there. So uh, you, you know, all of these results are all me. So there's everything there if you really want, want to watch me play video games and everything. So, yes? So when you do your share, you can share it to the community over the Plus. Yes, that'd be... Sometimes you're going to share it to Google Plus, and then you select the community in Google Plus. Exactly, because this comic is related to Superman, which is DC Comics publisher. So I want to go to the place where the most people would be interested to listen to it. Let's say Victor's Bakery. I'm making my podcasts or my YouTube videos. I go on Google Plus and find the appropriate community about food and baking and all of that and share it to the place where people would be most interested to listen to that podcast or watch that video. That's one of the reasons I really like Google Plus because you can find a great community and really promote yourself there. And Google Plus is just Yeah, it's my favorite social network of all. It used to be Twitter for a long time, but then Google Plus now. Uh, and Facebook was never in my top ten, but uh, I I like here a lot and and Twitter because it's also very immediate, although it has its pros and cons. Yes. Yeah, that's a Yes. It impacts it a lot and negatively because uh, Facebook, uh, now that they're at a point, you know, they're the 800 pound gorilla, and before all of these Senate investigations and such, they, they were the cock of the walk and they were in charge of everything, so they could do whatever they wanted. 
and then now with all of the scrutiny, perhaps not as much. So when they uh, decided, uh, well, for the benefit of our members, we are going to devalue and not show so many ads to our members because members want to communicate friends and family, well, that's bad for us as businesses because then now we don't reach the audience like we used to be able to reach. But guess what? The more we pay Facebook, then the more we can reach the audience. So it is, it is, it has been negative, and most likely will still be negative when Facebook decides that they're going to devalue our reach as a business. It just means we're going to need to pay more. Whereas we used to pay a dollar to reach a hundred people, now maybe that dollar is going to reach twenty people. Who knows? So then this begs the question: Is it really worthwhile For the moment, it still is. Uh, who knows how things will? will change uh, after all of this scrutiny is happening with you know data breaches and uh, fake news and um, uh, foreign interference and all of that who knows who knows how all that will shake out I, I wouldn't I wouldn't stop my business's Facebook page even though there's been some like big names out there like Tesla they said after the stuff that happened with Cambridge Analytica they said okay we're done and they deleted their 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 Facebook page you know the CEO publicly said we're, we're, we're done with Facebook I don't think there's been a mass exodus of big companies that have been coming away from it just because of, you know uh, y y you it's too it's too much of a sweet plum to to give it up but who knows what will happen if any regulations or anything we'll see yep bad result Sometimes these things are a little slow to. Um, so um, we're going to move into our first break in a moment, but that's the that's the big idea. Uh, podcasts. Uh, you can do it simply for fun. You could do it uh, for as a promotional tool. Uh, you have no. Um, you have no one telling you when you can publish, what you can publish. Um, you can um, be on a weekly schedule, once a, or every other week, once a month. Um, there's some podcasts that I listen to that they publish twice a week. Um, but there's some of the bigger ones. And this is just another marketing tool because as uh, 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 more recently I started to use this also with Patreon. How many of you have heard of Patreon before? Patreon is a, um, is a way for you to make money online uh, in the form of subscriptions. Uh, you create videos, you create podcasts, you create blogs, whatever, and then you get patrons that then contribute to you. They can pay you, they can donate to you, whatever, however you want to define it. Uh, whatever you ask, you say okay. Uh, at a dollar per episode, you can uh, you can follow me. You can uh, donate five dollars a month. There's some people on Patreon that, that make lots and lots of money that they've managed to create a brand for themselves, and they get patrons. They get people loyally subscribing to them and donating to them. Uh, Patreon takes a cut, just like everything else, but you know you get ninety percent of the of the pledges so uh, in the podcast and the videos that I do I mention it in there and I said if you like these episodes don't forget to head on over to my patreon and think about donating a dollar a month so obviously that's just icing on the cake I like to make those videos I like the podcast and all of that and if people pay me a dollar or two from that that that's fine that's fun it's a little bit of extra incentive but this is another way uh, nowadays that you could um, monetize yourself. So, just side note, Patreon.com to uh, create a funding source. You could uh, you could have uh, one way to do it is like you give away. What I've started to do is because I can talk about a comic for for a long time. I limit it that it's uh, an episode five minutes long, as I usually have done. Then the patron exclusive version, you know, 10 minutes long, 12 minutes long, is available for a dollar. So if people just want to hear the five minutes, that's fine, that's for free. 
And if they want to hear the longer version, it's you know a dollar a month to access it and many other episodes. So there's this brand new uh, funding source, this brand new economy, and uh, you might want to look into it if it sounds interesting. Yes. The free one is on SoundCloud, but then the the paid one, the longer one, is on Patreon, and that's where you can make it private so that people can't listen to it until they pay. So it's going directly to Patreon.com? Yeah. Like yes, so they have uh, apparently an unlimited, and that's Patreon.com slash VM Campos. Uh, that one has um, a... Um, See over here, yeah. So there's the public one, the one that it's embedded. You see, it's embedded from SoundCloud. Uh, they can listen to it directly on Patreon. That's the episode right there. But then uh, it's this one also promotes that there's the patron only version, and there it is there. So if you want to hear the patron exclusive one, then you have to unlock it, and then it goes here. Okay, well, that's just you know one dollar a month. Access, lets you access that and every other patron exclusive um, episode. So they call you Pichu? Well, you can uh, you can call your um, your your tiers of contributions to whatever you want, and I don't know. I just put some Pokemon <laughs> names here, or whatever. So you know, if you want to contribute, you have the name. So that reminds me of Meetup. Meetup, you have you have so many. Yes. So far I have um, five people that have been donating uh, at various tiers to access the content. So there's some people that make thousands of dollars off of this a month. You can see it on their on their account there, those of it that reveal it. Yeah. In your case, um, how do you hear the longer the version? Say that, no, 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 even with a dollar, even the one dollar accesses the long version. It's it's fine. Okay, so the one dollar one is not five times as long. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who's yeah, even like uh, the people that are very the people that are very good at Patreon, yes, they do set it up that all of these tiers give you much more. But they also make like Patreon one of their main jobs. And I've got already day jobs. This is on the side. This is something for, for fun. So I just, I, I have it a, not that complicated. So, okay, I'm getting... $5, $5, you know, after a while, in a year, you can... That's $60 right yeah, there. $60. So from one person. So. Little... so right here, okay, yeah. um, not so impressive as others, but okay, $7 a month, you know, from these people that are donating, that's an extra, that's an extra latte a month right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but if you're using YouTube... Extensively, this, this can make your money. Yes. Yeah. yeah, if you couple you can a... Do sort of an intro video to something and then to get the whole video. For something like, okay, you know, intro video, but without all of the steps, if you want all the steps, you want yes. the whole video is 20 minutes. And exactly, and this is, this is very viable nowadays that YouTube has changed their system that you need 10,000 hours of views and 1,000 subscribers. So before that, that big reckoning. I, I was making, you know, like a hundred dollars off of YouTube every couple of months, uh, but then after they put those huge that huge bar, zero. So. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I have. That's different yeah. ways I've done it over here. So, related to audio, uh, here's another one over here. Um, let me show you this one over here. Okay, so um, here it is. Okay, so Toys R Us, you know, they, they, they went bankrupt and all of that and liquidation and such. So I went to my childhood Toys R Us that I went there you know, for the first time, you know, when I was a kid and it was still around. It's the one over in Chula Vista on Industrial Boulevard. So I went to Toys R Us and I, and I did a little recording of me walking around and looking at, at the stuff there before they closed. So I have the eight minute long version right there for you to hear for free and then I've got the longer one uh, 
for patrons only, which is you know a dollar to, to access that. So this is very viable nowadays. Yes, you 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 give a tease of something and say you want the longer one, you uh, you can pay. Now obviously you have to say it in a very very nice and marketing sort of way, not like give me money to hear more, but you have to say it in a way about like you know be an exclusive member or like, here's extra content because this this concept here these are known as microtransactions and this is this is this is going to save the internet for the past decade and it hasn't meaning that people when they figured out how can you pay like a dollar at a time or 50 cents at a time once we figure out a way that people can pay so little at a time then you're going to see an explosion of people making money online not really because suddenly then we realize people are very cheap it's very easy to click a like button it's very easy to click thumbs down it's very easy to click and reply great job but suddenly it becomes very difficult and hard to use the mouse to click contribute or donate or anything like that but with the right messaging and price and such it, it can work yeah this go when you set this up you get paid uh, through there's a couple of systems but I think I've got it set up through PayPal so good old PayPal, you just set up PayPal and so many of these systems, they, they pay you and your, and your money goes into your PayPal account and then from there you put it into your bank account. It's pretty direct. PayPal is really the one that's the easiest for all of this. Um, and you know, if you also just want to send me money directly, you can just go over here. PayPal, me, uh, what's my name in here? BMC Inc., I think. Uh, yeah, right there. So if you want to send me money, go right there. Easy. So they, they really make it uh, easy to do these digital transactions nowadays. In theory. So when you do the dot me, you won't get charged. You get this over, yep, from PayPal itself. Yeah. Yeah. Me was the one that you don't get charged. You don't have to pay the fees. I have to double check, but usually I'm not doing. I got paid bill. Sometimes they've been asking me about me or the credit or something like that. So. This is, I believe, the one that yeah, no, no fees, free for you. BMC Inc. pays the fees, free for the person sending the money. But there's all you're always gonna, someone's gonna get charged when there's monetary transactions. There's always a middleman when it comes to to money. Uh, and it may be, you know, half a percent or five percent, or it, it, there's always some sort of charge. All of these credit card swipes that we're doing all day long with Visa and debit, uh, Visa and Mastercard and all of that—that's millions of dollars every day that these companies are paying. You know, Target having the American Express to swipe, they're paying Master, they're paying, paying American Express millions of dollars every day. We don't see that. Target eats it. But they're making the billions of dollars of our purchases that then they pay to the credit cards. Okay, so let's take uh, a break. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll continue. It's ten forty-five. We'll take a break until ten fifty-five, and then we'll go on.